Hello, this is your host Mr. Hicks and it's time for some chemistry. Today we're going to talk about stoichiometry which is a really big word and we're going to narrow in and just look at something that we call molar ratios today. So let's get started. So at the end of today what I hope you'll be able to do here is I hope you'll be able to understand this meaning of this word stoichiometry at least get an idea of what it is. We're going to use this thing called a molar ratio, something new that we're going to be working with, molar ratio, and uh, see how that fits along with our balanced equations that we've learned how to do. Finally, we're going to solve what we call mole to mole stoichiometry problems. That'll be fun. So, stoichiometry is a branch of chemistry where uh, we look at how much of the reactants and the products, the quantitative amounts of reactants and products that are together. So um, the uh, Greek word here kind of comes from the idea that we're measuring all of the elements out, getting things in their right proportions, kind of like a cook who would try to get things into the right proportions, making, say, some pancakes, and you have to get everything in the right proportions. You might want to know, how much milk should I add? How many eggs? How many cups of flour? The balanced equation is kind of like the recipe, and it tells us that information. The person also might want to know, how much am I going to get? How many pancakes am I going to get out of this recipe? And uh, again, the balanced equation is the place to go to to find that out. So if we know how much stuff we're mixing together, we can tell how much stuff we're going to get out of the reaction. So we use this to determine how much of the reactants do we need and how much of the products are we going to make from a particular reaction. So as I said, the balanced equation is kind of our key. It's the recipe for all of this. Now here I have a balanced equation with some hydrogen and oxygen forming some water. And uh, I know from this, with these coefficients right here, these coefficients tell us the proportions of each of these. It's saying that if I have two of these molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen, I'm going to end up with two uh, molecules of water in the end. So like I said, kind of like a recipe, huh? If I have two of these and I have two of those, or one of these, excuse me, then I'm going to make two waters in the end. But what if I don't have two? What if I need more than just two molecules of water? What if instead of starting with just two molecules of hydrogen, what if I started with like maybe four molecules of hydrogen? Well then, how much oxygen would I need? Well, you say, geez, now I've got four molecules. This has to stay in the same ratio, right? Two to one to two ratio. And so if I have four of these now, that means I'm going to need two of these. And in the end, instead of just getting two water molecules, now I'm going to get four of these water molecules that's going to come out. Again, if I am looking at this and saying, well, geez, um, what if I don't want four? What if I want like eight molecules of hydrogen? Then how many of these am I going to need? Well, then, yeah, yep, you guessed it. I'm going to need four of those. And since I have eight of these, I know this is the same ratio here, so I'm going to need eight of these, right? So everything stays in this ratio. Now it's eight to four to eight. Can you do big numbers? Like how about 10? What if I had 10 of these? Well, then I would need, that's right, five of these, and I would get 10 waters. How about working in a different unit, like a dozen? If I had two dozen hydrogen how many oxygens would I need? Yep, you guessed it. One dozen oxygens. And I would get two dozen waters in the end. So we can work in these different units, dozens, and of course our favorite one in chemistry is the mole, right? So what if I had two moles of hydrogen? Mole is just a big number, isn't it? Just like a dozen. Then I would need one mole of oxygen. I would get two moles of water. So everything stays in this two to one to two ratio at all times. 
It's set by our balanced equation. So we call this a molar ratio. And as I said, two moles of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen, two moles of water, that is our molar ratio. And we use the molar ratio and set it up with the dimensional analysis, just like we've been using the other things. So down here I have my sticks that we've seen in the past. I'm multiplying by my conversion factor. I can convert with these too. I could say, well, for every two moles of hydrogen, I'm going to get myself, I'm going to need one mole of oxygen. And I could also say for every two moles of hydrogen, I'm going to get two moles of water. So I can use these different parts of the molar ratio to convert from moles of one thing to moles of another. Now this molar ratio that we have or that we're setting up over here has some special thoughts about it. First of all, it's always moles over moles. So far you've probably not been working with moles over moles. You've had grams over moles or liters over moles or moles over atoms, but not moles over moles. So the molar ratio is the only one that has mole on the top and mole on the bottom. Second thing is, is that this has two different substances that's a part of it. So here I have water and hydrogen. Before, you were changing things from how many grams of hydrogen was one mole of hydrogen, or how many uh, molecules of water was one mole of water. They were both the same, water and water, hydrogen and hydrogen. Here, they're two different substances. And the third thing is, is that we get the numbers that go in front of the moles from the balanced equation. Probably before, you've only worked with the number one in front of the mole. That's because you've been changing it to how much does a mole of water weigh, or how many molecules are in a one mole of hydrogen. But now we're getting these numbers from our balanced equation up here. The two for the hydrogen and the two for the water come from those coefficients. That's because now we're setting up a ratio that's switching from one substance to another. Speaking of switching, many times we call this making the switch. We use this molar ratio to make the switch from one substance to another substance. So whenever you find yourself having to move from one substance, in this case hydrogen, to oxygen, since we're moving from one substance to another, you're going to have to use the molar ratio. So let's see how this works itself out. I want to know how many moles of hydrogen will I need if I have seven and a half moles of oxygen I need to react and make water with. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up dimensional analysis just like we've done before. I have moles of oxygen up here on the top. So I'm going to take my moles of oxygen and put it down there. I'm going to make it one mole of oxygen because that's the coefficient for oxygen. And what do I want? I want hydrogen. So I'm going to take the hydrogen information from my balanced equation and put it on the top moles of hydrogen, two of them, because the coefficient here is two. If I crunch this out then, seven and a half times two, then in the end, I would find out that this is equal to 15 moles of hydrogen. Let's try this again. I got another example for us here. So this time, instead of moles of hydrogen, let's start out with moles of oxygen and figure out how many moles of water we're going to need. huh? So again, setting this up with my question mark format, I want to know how many moles of oxygen will I need to make 0.53 moles of water? Again, moles of water is on the top. So I'm going to want to put moles of water on the bottom. It has two moles of water because the coefficient up here is two. 
and we want oxygen so I'm going to take and put moles of oxygen on the top I have just one mole of oxygen because over here the coefficient is just one and so then if I just crunch this out on my calculator I would be able to find that All right, so I said that uh, we were here to figure out what stoichiometry is, learn about this thing called a molar ratio, and solve some of these mole-to-mole -mole problems. So let's take a couple mole-to-mole -mole problems, and uh, I'll do one, and then I'll give you the opportunity to do another one. So here I'm switching my reactions. I'm switching it over to the reaction for making ammonia. This is ammonia here and I'm going to take nitrogen and three hydrogen molecules and I'll make two ammonia molecules out of this. So the question here is how many moles of hydrogen gas will you need to make 8.8 .8 moles of ammonia? So I'm going to start out with my question mark format. How many moles of hydrogen will it take to make 8.8 .8 moles of ammonia. Now I'm going to use that molar ratio so get it ready. On the bottom I'm going to have moles of ammonia. It's very important. Now we have a number, a unit, and a substance. It's very important that you keep all three going at the same time. So down here, I'm also going to just duplicate that, right? Moles of ammonia. And how many moles of ammonia? I'm going to take a look up here and I see, oh, it's two. Two moles of ammonia. So I'll put a two there. I get that from the coefficient in the balanced equation. On the top, it says that we want moles of hydrogen. So I'm going to write that over here moles of hydrogen. How many moles of hydrogen? I look up here and I see up oh, the coefficient is 3 so I'm going to put that on the top. Now my moles of ammonia is going to cancel and I'll be left with moles of hydrogen. How many moles of hydrogen? Well I need to take my 8.8 .8 and multiply it by 3 halves and I get 13.2 How is that? How about you give it a try? We'll take this problem off and put this problem on. And you can go ahead and press pause, set this one up, use the units and the substance so you can get everything in its right place and then I'll come back and tell you how you did. Alright, so I hope you did this one fine. Mole to moles is what we're working on. And uh, again, starting out with that question mark format, it says how many moles of ammonia? So that's what I want. And how many moles of ammonia are we going to make from 0.61 moles of nitrogen? Again, set up that dimensional analysis. Moles of nitrogen is on the top. So I'm going to put that on the bottom here. How many moles? Balanced equation. One mole of nitrogen. What are we going to put on the top? moles of ammonia and how many moles of ammonia? two moles of nitrogen is going to cancel I'm going to effectively multiply by two 
and it looks like my answer then is going to be 1.22 moles of ammonia. Ah, I hope you got that right. So just to kind of summarize here, we've learned that stoichiometry is a way of predicting how much of reactants we need and how much of the products we're going to get. We use this thing called the molar ratio from the balanced equation. And finally, we can solve mole-to-mole -mole problems by using dimensional analysis and using our new friend, the molar ratio. Well, that's all for now. Hope to see you again for another chance at learning some chemistry.